You, you're promoting total abstinence. Total abstinence, yeah. How practical a message is that for today's young kids? Uh, it's very practical because I think the stereotype is that everybody's out there doing it. You know, that um, the image is because sex, so, so to speak, I guess would we'll say it sells, you know, because of in the media, from uh, print, whatever. It gives you the impression that everyone's doing it, so it's encouraging, I think, the young people that this is just a normal way of, of acting, a normal behavior, but not everyone's really doing it. There's people out there, there's a lot of young people that are really trying to withstand. Maybe they haven't been sexually pure their whole life, but a lot of them are trying to change their mind and say, I don't want to give into that peer pressure. I can make a decision on my own. But what do you tell kids who, who, who don't have much mm -hmm. and say, hey, why shouldn't I enjoy my own sexuality? It's one of the few things I have access to. Well, because it is that. It's something very precious. It's something that's very, I think it's the most highest valuable gift that a person can have is their own body. And that's really how I look at it personally, is that, you know, you need to take care of your body, take care of yourself, and not just give it around or pass it around like butter out of the table or anything of that nature. When you tell kids that, what do they say? Well, some of them are saying, well, you know, I understand what you're saying, but it's hard. You know, I mean, my friends are telling me this, my boyfriend is telling me that, I'm getting pressured here and there. You know, but I say, hey, if, if I can sort of abstain NBA for nine years and I'm not practicing sex, and I say, it's probably a little bit easier for you than me. You practice what you preach. Um, you've abstained totally. Yes, I have. You don't think that odd? Um, and today, by the norm, yeah, of course, I think it is, because most people and the stereotype athletes especially are, in general, promoting otherwise. You know, hey, have fun. You're only living for so long going out there and, you know, make as many babies as you can, it seems like. And that's not only from athletes, but it's from yeah. just men we're not general. talking about having, we're not talking about making babies. We're talking about having, having sex here. I mean, it, it is, it is a part of life's experience. Right. You, you don't think you've missed anything in life as a result? No, no, I don't. I don't think I've missed anything. I mean, if you look at uh, the potentials, you know, out there, or what I could have missed, you know, maybe uh, the lady I was probably with probably maybe being pregnant, you know, maybe uh, some particular sexual transmitted disease, just a question in my mind, you know, or just really emotionally giving myself to somebody that I, I know I'm not going to be with for the rest of my life. I don't think I missed out on anything. I think it's worth the wait. How hard has it been to, to, to abstain, AC? I mean, we, we've all heard, you know, Will Chamberlain's claim that he slept with 20,000 women and, and Magic Johnson, women by the thousands. Um, Basketball players live in life's fast yeah. lane. There, there are a lot of young ladies and a lot of road stops. How hard is it? How hard is it? Um, it really just depends on the individual. You know, if your appetite is great, then, you know, it's going to be as hard. It's going to be hard as you, you name it. But for me, for someone who's really not looking for that, uh, it's pretty easy. I don't mean it's very easy, but it's pretty easy because I'm not really out there. I'm not trying to get close to the fire because if I do, I feel I probably will get burned because I'm not a superhuman being. I'm someone that can fall, I can slip, I can stumble, and definitely I'll make mistakes. What are your teammates, what do the other NBA players <laughs> <No>. <laughs> make of this? I can only imagine. Um, well, there are those that will say, man, you are crazy. You know, you're crazy. What you're saying is just, you know, you're out of this world. It's very unrealistic for yourself as being an NBA player as well as what you're trying to tell the other young people. They're going to do it. But then there are those that really try and encourage and say, hey, all these other things they're seeing, they must not be working because you look at what's happening with the single parents, you know, you look at as far as even the, the children as babies having babies. Hey, we got to give them another message out there, so I applaud what you're trying to do. And you hear a lot today about practicing safe sex, but if there was such a thing as safe sex, then why are so many young people paying such a high price? The numbers of unwanted pregnancies, abortions, sexually transmitted diseases, including the HIV virus, are increasing dramatically each and every year. Instead of playing Russian roulette with your life, isn't it about time you try something new? The only true form of safe sex, the only 100% guaranteed way that you will not get a sexually transmitted disease or an unwanted pregnancy is to abstain from sex until the point that you get married. With the Lakers, and the perception is that the typical NBA life has this opportunity where there's fast cars, lots of money, and lots of women. I've seen the challenges and the pitfalls and I've seen some guys really succumb to it. But for me, the challenge has always been, you know, not get distracted, you know, by those things. And I wanted to get married. And then I met Veronique, sharing with her and letting her know this is who I am, this is what I believe. And she really appreciated that. My heart's always been 
to help kids. And it started with my own nieces and nephews. AC Green Youth Foundation uh, is going on now 18 years. The mission of the whole foundation, it is abstinence. We want to see kids know the values of protecting your body, keeping your body pure, not just sexually, but also from drugs, from violence. The other biggest component is we also teach a basketball camp that's been going on now 18 years. My goal is how they start on Monday is not going to be the same on Friday. And so this constant instillment of character development is what I'm constantly telling these kids. It's amazing to me how you set such an incredible moral standard, not only just for sex, but you set a moral standard for your life. I, I said to myself <laughs> as I read, read through your material, how did this man go through all of these years, 16 years, Yes. how did you go through them without being <laughs> coming under the influence of the worldly aspects? How did you do that? Well, you know, God's grace is so sufficient. I mean, we know we're sin abounds. His grace will abound even much more and higher. We, we're always around temptation. We're always around the atmosphere of the dark elements. We can't get out of it because we're in this world. But when your heart is and your desire is to really want to know and see how you can please God and please Jesus, God will not only protect you, but he will give you the victory and the, and the, the power to overcome those circumstances, the elements you Temptations find yourself in. Temptations must have been great. Oh, great, Morris, they were always there. You always have temptation, absolutely. But you know, the scripture I learned when I was 17 years old, that very day I said yes to Jesus, it was Matthew 6, 33, which really says, seek first, kingdom. seek not second, but seek first the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness and all other things will be added unto you. You know, people are wondering, you know, they hear mm -hmm. 16 years, you went all through this abstinence. Mm -hmm. What's your message? to the young people watching today? You know, we, we developed a curriculum called Game Plan with, inside of our AC Green Youth Foundation. And Game Plan is one that centers around character development, helping kids develop the character, the self-control, help them to understand, you know what, you can have the victory. You don't have to give in the peer pressure. You don't have to be confused by the media in some way. You have, you have to be able to understand what the media is suggesting to you to watch right. as opposed to what's really good for you to watch. And this curriculum game plan is going into almost over 100,000 students' hands just this year alone, Morris. In the middle school to high school. How much? Over 100,000 wow. kids. Yes, wow. yes. And are you Talk to young people. What, how would you advise them if, if they are interested in trying to, to be a professional athlete? You know, I would say continue to go for the dream. Just as you said, I mean, you, you go for your passion. You out there, you, you want to be a professional, you know, you want to be an entertainer, whatever the dream might right. be, I don't care the, the profession, the occupation, don't stop, don't lose your desire, don't lose your passion, be the best, be fully equipped, prepare yourself, do as much as you possibly can and just really allow and, and let the Lord really show, lead and guide and direct you because the vocation needs a good witness, mm -hmm. okay, I'm a perfect prime example in the sense of a person who had done extraordinary things only by the grace of God. Amen. That's all that it takes. It's just the ability to let God use you where you are. I come from a small town, Portland, Oregon, um, in the wonderful state there itself. But at the same time, you know, I'm just willing. I was always ready and wanted to be used by God. But why? Because my journey, my life is not over because basketball is over. Correct. And so the identity is not just inside of that. So right. if you land that wonderful career, always remember, and I always say, you know, you got to be able to have the character sustain where the talent is mm -hmm. and to be able to surpass it and right. keep you there. Amen. That's a good word. Good word.